you're with Worker Justice Wisconsin. Um, you're located in uh, Madison, right? Yeah. Um, and what's what's your role at Worker Justice Wisconsin? Um, my title is co-ops organizer. So incubation, basically. Mm-hmm. But I prefer the title organizer. Nice. And uh, you said that you're part of a, a worker union as well? Yeah, so we're a worker center, and we have our own union for our staff. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and we're part of OPIU Local 39. OPIU? Office and Professional Employees International Union. A lot of staff, like union staff, are often with OPIU. Okay, cool. Um, and how, how has the union helped you out? So I think personally for me, what well, came with the raise... So it's brought us closer to the the average for organizers in our area and also in the local. So it, our pay gap is closing. Um, but for me, the biggest improvement was the job security. Um, because for nonprofits, it can be really like one year you run out of money <laughs> and like there goes your job. Um, but we have something codified now in our contract uh, that we are able to get where if we do run into a major deficit that we cannot make up by the end of the year, the highest paid person takes a pay cut and then the person after, and then we go like that. Everybody takes a pay cut in order to save that person's job. Um, and then if there are layoffs, if it go, after pay cuts, then we cut out um, like as many non-essential things from our budget as we can. And if that's still not enough, then we go in order, reverse order of seniority uh, for layoffs. And so that has been really good for me because there's not a lot of funding specifically for co-op incubation, like specific to that. Um, and so my job always felt a little bit like it could go away any time now. Um, so now it is like, okay, like it could still happen, but we'll do everything we can to keep the staff that we currently have. You make quite a distance, right, to get to the conference. Um, what were you seeking at the conference? Um, I was looking to connect with other developers, incubators that worked with um, undocumented workers, workers that are usually left out um, of unions that are usually left out of conversations like this. Um, and I did get to meet a lot of them. And I did get to connect with, um, with some folks that work with undocumented workers and the challenges that come with family owned co-ops and immigrant owned co-ops. How did you get to the conference? A uh, union cab uh, took a van, packed it full of co-op people and we got there. <laughs> nice. And, and was that your first uh, worker co-op conference? Yes. Uh, I had, I had been to labor notes earlier in the year where there was a bit of a co-op presence. And I went to ACE Institute last year, but not one specific to just worker co-ops. Uh, so this one comes from um, another GEO member. He wanted me to ask this. Um, what, are, what are your goals for the work? And where do you see opportunities to push the envelope towards economic and social transformation? That's a big question. <laughs> um, I guess, hmm, I guess there's several things I'd like to see change. Um, sorry, moving around. Um, one thing I would like more than anything that I'm pushing towards is more cultural sensitivity among Madison, the Madison co-op ecosystem. 
And it's not just, you know, making sure things are translated and are at a, an adequate register for the average person, but kind of, yeah, the cultural sensitivity of, hey, don't quote this guy who said these really problematic things about Mexicans, but also uh, being compassionate about what people are coming from. So my example, people coming to Labor Fest and waving the communist flag, and we're trying to have more Venezolanos out here. We're trying to have like people that have fled like authoritarian governments they see socialism or they see communism. And even if they might be aligned with a lot of those values, they're escaping that. <laughs> they're escaping tyranny and they don't want to see anything that reminds them of that. Um, and so it's just like, you know, maybe don't be so brazen about it. <laughs> of like, understand where people are coming from. Uh, yeah, there's there's like issues with that and um similar of like kind of missing the mark on like I will go to a protest I go to a rally uh about Starbucks uh not supporting um uh their like LGBT like gender affirming care basically uh provided through their health plans and then sh someone shows up to the to the rally with like a Che Guevara shirt, like he was a homophobe. <laughs> so it's like there's gonna be like cultural clashes as long as there's like different cultures, and I yeah I just want people to like come like understand that uh, Latin America like immigrants are so freaking diverse and you have to it's not just like oh they're liberal you know and yeah that's a that's a big gripe that i have is like there's every type of person and some are going to be really put off if you're waving a certain flag and you got to be a little more sensitive to that um and know how to speak to that without scaring them off and other people are like totally about that but you got to be able to like switch between those things. Do you have anything you would like to plug? We are launching uh, Los Volcanes Co-op October 10th. So if anyone's in town, hit us up. It's in Middleton, so right outside of Madison. Um, and then we have a couple, we have a campaign that's currently active. It's not quite public yet. We have one that will be public in a few months. So just keep, just like stay up to date on, on our stuff. Subscribe to our newsletter. Um, follow us on social media. <laughs> um, that usual stuff. Um, also, yeah, I just want to connect with more, more uh, like BIPOC cooperators and learn from everybody else um doing this work um we got to stick together you know